You're listening to the Descent World Podcast. I've got to say, it's nice to have you back. Stable through the bumps, stable through the air. He's just growing that quick. It's hard to keep track of him at the moment. Fish, four fish fingers, some potato wedges, and some mushy peas. Two prolapsed discs in my back, and uh, it's giving me some pins and needles in my legs, and I've got a separated shoulder. The new guy called Jason Jessops is in there. Jason Jessops, his name is? In veteran class, he's pretty fast. In downhill, you can work to the minute, like everything we can plan pretty much to the minute. But we can't do that now because we don't have a schedule. Is. You ever take it off any sweet jumps? You're listening to the Descent World Podcast. Good evening, Ben Cassero on the line from a remote island on the west coast of Scotland. How the devil are you? I'm absolutely fabulous and uh, enjoying living the, the island life. How are you, John? I'm great, thanks. It's a bit of a wild night. I'm sure it is up your way as well. The, the wind's coming in. There's this... I think it's the tail end of Hurricane Angus or whatever it is that hit the south coast yesterday. So we're going to talk to, talk to you tonight on the on the podcast for just just basically we're going to run through what what's been happening with you lately and how you got started in the sport. And in case of those guys that don't know you, you're probably just about the fastest man in Scotland at the moment. I mean, every time I see a result, you're standing on a podium, and you're either winning enduro races, you're winning downhill races, you're series champion this, series champion that. Where did this all start, Ben? How did you get into mountain bikes? Um, it was a, a local friend, actually, a um, guy called Ian Ezzy. He was, well, as far as I know, the first biker I was aware of in the little town with the amazing name of Benderloch, where I grew up. And I went to a race to watch him ride and thought it looked absolutely rad. So took my Rally Max and absolutely ruined it on some uh, <laughs> local walkers pass. <laughs> Bent the pedals, so then you'd have to rotate the cranks 180 degrees so I could bend them the other way. <laughs> uh, and then another guy that some guys might have heard of, Chris Hutchins, he lived in the same village and went to a race. I think he came like eighth, and I thought I could do better than him. So <laughs> I started racing. Well, that does. <laughs> it's funny, um, funny she said, I, rem- yeah. I remember Ian. Is he? Is he? He's always used to ride a hardtail. He was a pretty hardcore rider. And was was that one? Yeah, of the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was that one of the, the the early clockwork races, or was it actually a Scottish cycling race? Uh, the first race I ever did was uh, a Forest Scottish downhill. Right. Um, and it was. I remember we did the the short tracks back then. I think it was two thousand and one. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did like a completely se- separate one because apparently the Juvies weren't good enough to do the full track and I remember it was a minute 20 long and on my first race run I crashed five times so it was pretty spectacular <laughs> Ball, <laughs> balls to the wall and then face to the floor yeah I can, I can remember I can remember you starting racing because obviously your dad's been a big part of the SDA series but to go back to the first yeah. time I remember seeing you I think were you, you on a V10 the first time you raced, or was that sort of a couple of years later? No, I, I actually bought the guy I mentioned earlier, Ian Ezzy. He sold his Orange Patriot to me. Mm-hmm. Um, got it off of him with uh, some original Marzocchi Z1 Bams in Tangerine Orange. Uh, it was absolutely amazing bike, but it lasted three months before I snapped it. <laughs> and then due to a little ins- insurance uh I won't say scam, but quirk <laughs> and orange fixing the frame for me. The cash was made available to buy one of the first V10 frames that came into the country. So I was the luckiest kid ever. Yeah, I mean, I, the thing so is, that's how I got that chip. Yeah, the, th- the thing I remember mostly about you is being a master rider then is is the fact that when we lined up with you in the back of the uplift truck, you were still twice ahead of me and you were like 12 years old or something. <laughs> you, yeah, I, think I know, I- it's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> My school, my school photo from primary school. I'm stood at the back with all the teachers, taller than all the kids. It's quite embarrassing. So, so what's your, <laughs> what's, your, what's your secret secret to uh, long legs? Then is it <laughs> does it is it true that you know, good genes? Is it just getting getting hung from my legs as a kid? Just <laughs> uh, I don't know bags of manure and lots of cereal or something like that yeah so, so going back to the the sort of the family connection with the, the scottish downhill series your dad alan has obviously been a major part of the sda in its early early years when you came along racing was, was your dad was your dad helping out at the time or i can't i mean it's that long ago i, I i'm losing my memory these days uh, 
Like, well, it like, kicked off just with my dad coming to the races just to get me there. I don't know when it was he actually got involved. I think it was, it was really early on, within like the first year or two, just because yeah. he got chatting, was mad keen, and he saw himself as a bit of a an internet whiz kid, so uh, <laughs> kind of got involved with, the, involved with the entries and the timing and all that. Yeah, I mean, and I, to be honest, I think the, the, the Hutchins got involved with doing the timing and he was friends with them and got into it that way as well but he was pretty flipping integral to the back end running of it all for a yeah. good few years yeah i mean for those who don't know alan alan cathro was synonymous with the system the sda used for the time of the barcodes he helped uh, ross wilkie's dad in to get the system set up which mm. which is still in use today it's for some of the inner leaves and many downhills but what I remember most about your yeah. dad, yeah, I remember most about your dad at the time was that he was he was keen as and always always at the front helping folk out. And you actually uh, mm. the, sh- the shop that your dad runs, the Iona shop, actually started up a team. And there was you, Chris Hutchins, and a certain other certain Mister Andrew Phillips involved. Can you tell me how that yeah. came? Can you tell us how that came about? Uh, it was also his brother James Phillips. Yes, right. also yeah, raced back James, then yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, pretty, pretty much, my dad was like, "There's a good group of kids. All like we were all friends. We all lived within about two miles of each other." And he was like, "That'd be really cool just to do a team." And pretty much, he just got some cool jerseys made, which I still think are some of the best jerseys ever made. Like green, big Scotland flag, looked rad. And then uh, he kind of helped fund our entries for doing the racing. And yeah, that was a rad team. We flipping killed it. I think the four of us were in the top five in the country. Brilliant. So it was, yeah, it was unreal. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, having spent some time with you up, up in your local woods for quite a few years, in fact, not long after what we started this conversation, so the, it was about 2002, <laughs> 2003 or so. I, I remember it well because yeah. I had a massive blowout puncture in a pothole on the way up. And uh, I was, ah, I, I was, remember that, yeah. yeah, I remember I was stranded. I had, my car was stranded for about an hour till I got a, till I got a them and spare wheel on it and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that, mm-hmm. I digress with that. But uh, you obviously yourself, Andy, Chris have uh, we're all pushing each other back in the day. And obviously, Chris has come to the fore. He's he's heavily into the enduro these days. In fact, I think he's just won the uh, the uh, Kinloch Leaven enduro yesterday. I want a hard tail. Uh, it's a mad. On, mad enduro punter, yeah, mad enduro punter, I like that. Uh, he's, uh, he, I, believe, yeah. I believe he's riding a hardtail, so he had big smiles on the podium. I saw on a photograph on Insta Scam or whatever it's called these days. But uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Was he in, was he in the hardtail category, or was he did he win the whole thing in a hardtail? I, I don't know. I think he won the whole thing in the hardtail. I don't actually know. All right, yeah. Well, maybe maybe I'd, maybe I need yeah, to go back and to read the results, but. Uh, I think uh, what he called the fact know, that's that's brutal. Kinlock leaving's not smooth either. Oh, I know. I mean, thankfully, thankfully, I didn't. I didn't go. I think we're going to have some. Uh... Sorry, <laughs> this island satellite delay is causing some major <laughs> issues. <laughs> so, it's hard to believe like, you get a satellite delay from. In fact, you, but probably draw a straight line. You're probably not that far from me. <laughs> but. No. Uh, <laughs> But no, it's it's, it's the, the beauties of internet on the west coast of Scotland. That I'm not as quick. I'm probably not as quick as you. <laughs> but uh, no, oh, yeah, I think you're going to have to get get in the edit. Okay, no worries. Right, we'll we'll move on from here, and we'll go to we'll move on in years time. So after I own a shop, who were you riding for them? Mm. Did you get picked up by Mojo? No, right after that, it was. Uh... I didn't really know what I was doing, and then Hutchins sorted out a deal on the Hub in the Forest team, oh, riding yeah, for yeah. Tracy and Emma, and I pretty much just followed them. I was like, that sounds great, and the girls um, loaned us bikes for the year, and supplied us with jerseys, and kind of helped us out however they could, and yeah. rode for them for two years in the junior category, which was, yeah, that was brilliant. Oh, that was on Kona's staff. Yeah, I really enjoyed it? riding for that team. That was on Kona's, was it? Uh, it was, yeah, Stab's Preeps. Yeah, yeah, you're breaking up. A heck of a bike. That thing was a vessel. Um, yeah, t- uh, yeah, the tallest end going and the steepest head angle. So yeah, it was it was interesting. But uh, what about results of that? Those years, I mean, you, you were starting to kind of knock on the uh, the seniors' times then, no doubt, through all the years on the juvenile side. I mean, you're riding full courses by this stage, obviously. 
Mm, yeah, uh, as soon as we moved to youth, we were full of courses and then uh, in junior on the corners with the hub team, I uh, had a few good results. I was pretty sporadic on the results sheet. I was either at the bottom or the top, but <laughs> I somehow managed to win the, nas- the National Downhill Series that year. So, um, yeah, it was actually actually pretty good. I was quite pleased with that. Yeah. And then from there, was it, was it sort of... A- Move, I mean, don't get, my timing my timing's not good around that time because I think I was just concentrating basically on running websites and chasing after babies and stuff like that. But so yeah, I must I must bring this up to about two thousand and five or so. Is that right? Two thousand and six okay. is when I won the national junior right. series, and then that year I got picked up by the French Cube Bikes team. Ah, yeah, the Cube they, years. Yep, they saw me as a. Yeah, they saw me as the hot ticket because I'd beaten the Brendan Faircloth in the national series, even okay. though I missed a few races. But we won't yeah. go into that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you you rode a bike. I remember that uh, the, the Q bikes were a little bit strange, and you think you had difficulty getting getting a one that fitted you. Is that right? Oh man, uh, they approached me to say, and they said pretty much I had free reign on my bike design. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I w- I wasn't that clued up. And I pretty much just said to them, make it two inches longer than Pascal's one, because mm-hmm. I thought that seemed about right. Mm-hmm. And it was a- it was absolutely massive. <laughs> 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 it, like, it, I remember when I first got on it, it felt like the front end was just in another state. But <laughs> I think by today's standards, it's probably quite reasonable. But at the time, it, it felt too big. But it, it, I liked it. It was a it was a cool bike, like with a twin top tube, and it was like a low slung, like more trials bike. The look of it, but yeah, it, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So that that was that was sort of your t- first taste of the kind of the big time, wasn't it? Yeah, big time on the French team. Not understanding a word they were saying. <laughs> it's definitely. Uh, it was definitely a, a change moving on from the hub team. Yeah, and did they, did they take you some good good races? Did you do a lot of European stuff that year? Yeah, I did, I did a few bits and pieces with them. Um, mainly their focus was just helping me through the, the World Cup season. Mm-hmm. Um, so they kind of su- supported me on all of those. And then I think the final race of the year, the other two guys were injured. So the team didn't go. And I remember being left kind of on my own. And then I broke my only derailleur hanger. And it was like a bike that no one else had. Ouch. And the team wasn't there. And I, and I was screwed. So I did the whole event with chain ring off, chain off, mech off, cassette off, lighting that baby right up. And uh, <laughs> my goal was my goal my goal was just to qualify chainless. And I remember missing it by point five of a second when oh. I over the bars crash. I was gu- I was gutted. But uh, I yeah, that was actually the <laughs> I found it one of the most fun races of the year just because the pressure was totally off. Yeah. It was that's this was pretty cool. I mean, you think about what, what's happened with Chainless when uh, Nico's and uh, Gwyn's rides the last couple of years. Maybe if you'd have managed to do that, that would have been mm. that would have been headline news back then. But uh, the fact that those guys went out and then very nearly won a world championships and yeah. won a world cup as well. But uh, it just goes to show you. I mean, true, it's a bit, a bit old hat there. Yeah, when you talk to Chris Porter about things like that, about things like clutch max and you know geometry of the bikes and things like that, <laughs> you you can kind of you can see where Chris Porter's coming from. Which which brings yeah, us on to, in a, a Freudian link towards the, the next year is was what are we on to we're two thousand eight two thousand and seven are we and you're riding a Mojo I believe uh, yeah so you two thousand eight on the Mojo yeah so you're on a triple you're on a triple two 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 three or three two three whatever it is by then and you were in you mm-hmm. were in aero skin suits at Fort William that's probably the, the fondest memory I have of you from then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's oh, fondly, fondly remembered. Is that, is that is that the world championship <laughs> year as well? Is that the um, the same year Rury won? You guys were wearing skin suits up there. No, it was a year before. No, 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 that that was the year before the world champs was in Val that year. Right. Okay. No, yeah, two thousand eight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know where I am now. Mm. Yeah. So what do you got? The Sam Hill year. Yeah. So you're riding skin suits. And uh, you're, get, you're getting a bit of jet off folk, aren't you? Was, was that the? Was oh man, I got a lot of jet. I remember it was in the contract at the start of the year. I mean, Chris said this is what he wanted to do, mm-hmm. and 
by all rights, he's 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 bang on in a sport about speed, do everything to go as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. And I kind of signed the contract at the start of the year, kind of hoping it wouldn't it wouldn't come to fruition mm-hmm. that he would forget, but obviously did not forget. So he brought out these, uh, kind of wheeled them out at Fort William, presented these glowing black uh, monstrosities, which, to be fair, were ridiculously fast. I think we figured they were about five seconds quicker, um, purely with just wearing the skin suit. Um, but the, I, my biggest gripe with them was that they were made from thermal ski suit material. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember the World Cup that year, but it was about 25 degrees the whole weekend. Yeah, it was one of the hot. We were mel- <laughs> melting, <laughs> absolutely melting. So just getting peeled out of these things when we got to the bottom, it was so bad. But um, my standout memory from the person that gave me the most jip was coming through the finish line. And I went to shake Nathan Rennie's hand yeah, and he just looked away and blanked me. <laughs> At least when he got couldn't, a, be, couldn't believe it. Oh well, you but you got a pretty good time that year. What did you end up? Yeah, it was a weird one. I think I came through the finish and it, I went into sixth, mm-hmm. and then the time the timer kind of like reset and went back two seconds. I think something broke the beam before it actually came down, right? And then I ended up in eighth. But uh, to, to be honest, I wasn't happy with my run. I felt like I was riding good enough to actually get eighth mm-hmm. without a skin suit. Yeah, and then I had a cra- I had a crap run. In- and the skins that made up the difference. So right. it's it's kind of uh, I don't I'm not so stoked with coming eighth, but mm-hmm. it was it was still pretty good. It's it's pretty good when you when you look back at the people that have, have been top ten at Fort William, you can you can hold your head high, skin suit or not. You know, you you still got down there in that time. That's amazing. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm still uh, still good to have that up on the on the record yeah. site. So, so you, the, the, by this stage, you're back with Chris Hutchins as well. Chris Hutchins is on Mojo with you. And there was the, the famous Cathro, yep. Cathro and Hutch Could, graphic that was put out. Uh, couldn't, couldn't shake him off, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> some people say you still can't. <laughs> but, uh, nah, no, no, we're... we're Thick as thieves, like. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it's, it's good to see the fact that you're, you're still going out and hammering in the Enduros and giving him a run for his money. That's the main thing, you know. Battling for life, like. <laughs> so, from there, your kind of careers. I think you're probably starting university, kind of about then, aren't you as well? Yeah, well, I was about to. Yeah, um, I was all signed up to do mechanical engineering at university. Yeah, um, I kind of see myself as being a bit of a academic. I'm kind of that way inclined, but yeah. at that time, I kind of thought, well, I can do university at any time. So. About a week before I was due to go, I just decided, no, I'm going to focus on my racing. Mm, wow. Screw it. So <laughs> I cancelled it. And I think my name my name was still getting called out and like the rosters at the start of like freshers and stuff. Yeah. But uh, I don't regret I don't regret it at all. Right. I feel for me, I made the right choice by not going. And fr- <laughs> from there, where did you, where did you go after Mojo? Um, did Mojo? That was probably my one of my best years. I think I won the elite national series that year. Yeah. And then from there, uh, Mojo kind of backed off on the downhill team and I was left kind of hanging. So I just uh, gave Stu Thompson a call and started pestering him, told him he should give me a bike. And then I rode for MTB Cup for the next three years. So that was a three-year deal. So that's that's quite a length, lengthy time in sort of when you think of the big scheme of things. So that, that, that brings us right up mm. to what, what, 2011 then? Mm, I think it was, it was either 2011 or 2012. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. The, the, the years with Stu have blended together. It was either two or three. Yeah. I, I forget. <laughs> it went so fast. It was like, you know. It's all a blur. It's a blur, man. A blur of pink. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, yeah. That's good. so then after, after, after MTB cut, was that you going your own way or did you start now sort of getting involved in your, your coaching side of things? Uh, I think that was. I I'd kind of decided I wasn't going to take things as seriously, and I think Orange had decided they weren't going to fund downhill as much. Mm-hmm. And Stu was starting to get pretty busy with MTB Cut and actually kind of switching over to Cut Media and doing things outside of biking. Yeah. So things were kind of left up in the air, and I just decided I was burnt out. I was trying really hard. I was trading really hard, 
and the results weren't coming and like a lot of people get it was starting to become a bit of a chore Mm -hmm. i wasn't enjoying it as much so i just made the decision that screw it world cups are out i'll just have fun ride my bike for fun do a few regional races and try and like love it again Mm -hmm. which which worked because I flipping love it now, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then you started. I, mean, I think the last time I caught up with you, when when you were started starting out six skills, was probably about two thousand and eleven. I think was when I, when I I caught up with you at Glencoe. I had moved down to Wales. I had come up for a week and, mm-hmm. and spotted you at Glencoe. I think it was more the new T five you had at the time. I went, hey, new van, nice van, and you were starting that. Yeah. That, that was the start of six skills. I think sort of in earnest. That that was you starting your your sort of your new business, your new venture, and eventually yeah. the, new, the new team can you can you give us a bit more information about how you went about that and why you decided to do that uh, was it was it 2011 was it that early well it's 2000 sure. you had you had your your greenish colored t5 2011 mm. uh, i think because i remember my dad it was actually my my dad got the the T5, which mm-hmm. I probably stole at every opportunity. <laughs> um, I think he got that before I started the business. I'm right. pretty sure the business started in 13, okay. or the ideas of it yeah. were late 2012. Okay. And pretty much I'd, I'd helped out kind of teaching people uh, a few things before, mm-hmm. being kind of part of like the Scottish development team mm-hmm. and being with Ruri and being the elder one, we... Mm-hmm did a little bit of help with kind of teaching some of the younger guys and just yeah. I really enjoyed it. And I am really analytical in everything I do and just felt that with the, the kind of knowledge I had and with the way I kind of a- approach things that teaching people just seemed like a really good fit for me. But mm-hmm. to be honest, I didn't have a clue if I was going to enjoy it or not. I mean, I could have started it and hated it, but... I fully committed to it. I kind of dropped everything and just focused all my attention to starting up the business and I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, perfect choice. And now, I mean, the thing is, the thing I noticed as well is that once you once you made that kind of decision, as you say, you'd, you'd kind of got, felt yourself got burned out. You just seem to get faster. It's like, mm. you know, you're, you, I, think, I think you've <laughs> won the, the Scottish Elite Series now umpteen times in a row sort of thing. And it is funny, like, I, I feel like I'm a much better rider now, mm-hmm. even though I, I see I don't think I'm quite as quick because I don't have as much fitness and I don't have as much of a kind of all or nothing attitude because you mm-hmm. know I've got a business to work got a business to worry about. Yeah. So uh, I feel like I'm a much better rider, mm-hmm. and I'm almost as fast. And I suggest, yeah, I think I'm enjoying the racing so much that it's just showing in the results. It's yeah. really good. Did, dare I say you, you're a little bit more mature? <laughs> Eh, it happens to us all. <laughs> <laughs> we try and hold off. But it happens. A yeah. little so, bit of wisdom getting in. Yeah. So, so now, so now you're you, you're running six skills. You're training folk. You're you're passing advice onto the the younger generation now. Mm. You're also started taking up enduro, and you're doing quite well at that as well. I mean, I have seen you on the podium a few times. <laughs> and uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. It's you, pure, you, purely a business decision. <laughs> or, or I mean, it's it's one of these things. It's kind of like saying it's, it's hard to keep an old downhill or down. Not that you're old, but mm. it's the fact is that when you look at the, when you look at the top guys that are racing the enduro, I mean, you look at the mm. Mike, the Mike Kleins, the Chris Hutchins. They're they've all yeah. cut, they've all cut their teeth in the SDA. You know, yeah. especially in Scotland well, and the harder tracks. You know, they they, well, they kind of know how to ride a bike. You can't deny that the downhillers are the most skilled riders. It's just mm-hmm. the way it is in the nature of the sport. So if you can apply yourself to getting a bit fitter, enduro does kind of just fit. Yeah. Um, but for me, for me, it's um, advertising for the business, and mm-hmm. it gets me fit for downhill. It's so true. it's ideal. <laughs> it's true. So <laughs> so when it when it comes to a breakdown of, of, of the people that you're coaching, is it, you find it's fifty fifty or is it more downhill, more enduro? It was almost a hundred percent downhill to begin with, mm-hmm. and now it's starting to blend together. And it's I think trail biking more than say enduro, like because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people I teach who don't actually race. Yeah, it's starting to become the bigger part of it mm-hmm. because there's 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 more people that do it. So my heart is in racing downhill and teaching people the downhill because I love it. But then I also really enjoy the whole kind of trail biking aspect because, I mean, timing, just 
riding bikes and teaching people to ride bikes is meant whatever you do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's things like, you know, you, you've already called, you've got the likes of obviously Dirt School and stuff in the, on the south. Do you do you concentrate on sort of the west coast or are you Scotland wide? Um, I feel like I focus more on the racer. That's that okay. is just what I'm all about. So I advertise and try and skew my courses towards teaching people who want to race. I, I do I do all sorts, but that is where my interest is. Mm-hmm. So that's what I like to focus on. Yeah, and obviously with the SDA, you've hooked up with them to provide coaching on is it Friday evenings. You do that, or is it? Is it <clears> yeah. Uh, well, it, that's more. It's not so much in kind of partnership with the SDA. That's just me operating by myself to teach people who go to the SDAs, and it's perfect. Well, I, I kind of, I kind of have adapted it for people who are kind of new to racing. Mm-hmm. And they want teaching at the venues on the tracks, and it's more kind of teaching them how to tackle a race weekend. And it seems, yeah, it seems to be going down really well. Well, you think it's perfect. I mean, obviously the SDA, as we all know, is a perfect launching ground for the likes of yourselves. I mean, the the amount of people that you can name that came through that juvenile system that have went on to become multiple champions, Mm -hmm. be it world or series or whatever. I mean, you can rattle off that. That Ben Castro fella's done quite well. You've got, uh, (laughs) what's his name? Danny, Danny, Danny Hart. Yeah, Danny Hart came through and used to have some good battles with him. Um, <laughs> even though you you were twice the size when Danny started racing, and I, I think I've got a photograph to prove that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think it's still that way. <laughs> yeah, and then you're obviously Chris Hutchins, you'd Rory, you, you know, you'd mm. the hot bit of kids that came through that juvenile system, and, and still the SDA is is developing the youth side of things with the academy that they're doing and stuff. And I think yeah. I think Aye. when you look back and you you look at that, I just hope it continues for mm. long bit, and I hope Enduro doesn't steal the focus a bit too much with regard to entries and things like that. But uh, well, I, yeah. S- sorry, I, I I find that uh, like downhill, it's still the younger, accessible, technically challenging one. Like I think with enduro, you've got to be about fifteen to actually enter, mm-hmm. and then with the downhill, you can do it when you're twelve. Mm-hmm. So it's still like the, the one of the earliest points where you can actually get into the kind of more demanding sports. I mean, they could do cross country when they're younger, but they yeah. tend to be more focused on fitness and i suppose there's the mini downhills as well which are excellent yeah it's just it's like it's like the, the when we when we when we first started out i mean obviously i've been racing since 92 but before your time yeah but you know it, <laughs> it, it tended to be the you know the mad the mad hatters would go out there to be crazy guys coming down just absolute characters but nowadays it seems to be a lot more focused yeah. a lot more professional and do you do you think that there's there's room for that but there's also room for the fun bit i mean should we be doing more fun at races do you think um, I, I, it's it's funny. It has been getting more more serious. Like my standout memories of the fun times is uh, like Gary Forrest just being an absolute weapon and spraffing a load of crap at the top of the races and just like trying to bam everyone up and get everyone all bouncing about and stoked. And <laughs> that that is definitely mellowed out, mm-hmm. but it's still it's still a good laugh. But there's a few characters that could do it coming on through. Definitely. I don't know. We're talking about characters. Are we going to be talking about Mr. Blythe by any chance? You know, the comeback, <laughs> the come, the comeback kid. You know what I mean? It's uh... Blythe's an absolute legend, man. <laughs> he, he's definitely one of a kind. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll give him a shout out if anybody's out there and uh, who wants me to maybe have a chat with Alan Blythe sometime. Just uh, drop us a line. Got, in the comments uh, below. Got there. <laughs> watch it, watch out, Mr. Blythe. We're coming for you. But uh, so so with six skills, obviously that's that's the business name. Um, you mm. you've got have you got any more plans to do stuff for in two thousand and seventeen? What 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 sort of ideas have you got? Uh, nothing major um, and anything like severely different. But just with the business, um, hoping to there's a few new products I'm looking at trying to put together which is a bit boring and complicated but Mm -hmm. um, my main thing is I'm wanting to try and do a lot more in regards to video and kind of putting videos out Mm -hmm. and that is to do with personal kind of ones with me just going out and having a good time which is entertaining Mm -hmm. and also I'm also looking at kind of making and editing my own uh, kind of like skills videos so I've got a sh- like a crap ton of footage which I want to put together into some like a really detailed like 
you would say over overly detailed, but that's the way I am. Videos, which I find that the bike geeks and the people that are really into it would absolutely love. Yeah. So looking at doing that, and then other than that, I'm just keeping my eyes open for any rad opportunities, just to keep me interested and uh, yeah, keep racing. Oh, and I've also got some, two new riders lined up for the race team, who I'm really excited about. Well, can you mention? Can you mention any names? Can you? Top secret, top oh, secret. Okay, Can't okay. say because oh. the, the cares have just moved up into junior, and my whole goal with the race team was giving some kids a bit of knowledge, a bit of a kind of good atmosphere at the races to give them a foot up to junior mm-hmm. level. Because my belief is that junior level, that's when you have to be. At nowadays, you have to be trying to get on a team and get support mm-hmm. and kind of find your own way. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not in a position to provide like a, a world support so i'm trying to give these kids the foot up to so they can then just go and dominate mm-hmm. and i reckon the cars are going to have an interest in year next year okay are they, are they are they still on six skills or are they have they moved on Nah, they've been hoofed off it done <laughs> <with them. laughs> do, you, do you know where they're going have they got they've got a deal sorted out for themselves have they yeah they're, they're discussing with a few different parties oh, right. at the minute. so yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah i'm i'm thinking they're gonna they're gonna be good no, nothing to be released before the thirty first of December two thousand and sixteen. Uh, uh, hell no! Uh, I look for I look for that press release in Tommy's inbox, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's all good. So so you've got a couple couple of guys obviously lined up for next year. With mm-hmm. uh, going back to you mentioned about videos and stuff like that, we've noticed that uh, you have been uh, doing some kind of uh, video representation for the SDA over the past while, and suddenly mm. you're doing vlogs. You've got you've got a, a gorilla pod the old a gorilla pod <laughs> set up. You're vlogging. Yeah. You're becoming a YouTuber. So is that is that the ambition to, for world domination for by six skills in Ben Cathro, Is it absolute Seal <laughs> Island domination? I'm gonna <laughs> try come in like a wrecking ball. Um, I, I just find it's I really enjoy it. It's yeah. something I've always done. I've always I've always put a little vids. So. Um, I just thought it was a really good way to advertise myself in the business and just make me look like an absolute hot ticket for sponsors. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that's that's the way I look at it as well. I mean, I'm hoping you're getting a free um, camera out of this. <laughs> Not quite yet. We'll, come, we'll look at that for next year. Okay. Come on, bro, GoPro, give this boy a camera, or at least three. <laughs> you know, and that's what it is. But no, it, it, it's great to see people doing stuff like that because it, it sort of just shows the diversity of what's happening in the sport. I mean, with you, it's, there's a lot. There's lots of stuff going on. I know you've, you're just back from Sky with Tommy doing some photos, and that that took part of your uh, part of your vlog, which is quite good. Um, how do you how do you find working with Tommy? Is he a hard worker? Is he? <laughs> he's he's just a riot man. He's he's got a very kind of unique sense of humour, which is just brilliant, <laughs> and he's so down to earth as well. Like he can be an absolute bugger sometimes. I mean, I give him that, but. It mostly, mostly he's pretty good when he's not getting his ass out in public. Well, that that that, that is a problem I find <laughs> with him. You know, it's just yeah. it, you know, whenever that happens, I've got I've got to turn turn the blind cheek, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's got like a public indecency Tourette. So he just can't help himself. Well, I to, mean, to be honest, it, he has difficulty <laughs> holding his trousers up with one hand at the minute. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's when, when he's true. getting dressed, it's like it's just there's just flesh everywhere. You know. I it's embarrassing I mean, sometimes it didn't make it into the vlog but there was there was some <laughs> severe severe flesh on show uh, is, the less the less about toby's flesh i think the better i think we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there so so you've been riding this year with some sometimes with kenta and uh greg williamson how, how, how do you feel with those boys what they're doing on the world cup is it something which you, you look at and go oh i wish i was there or you sort of say no i've done i've done my bit let those guys do, do their best and get on. I mean, you you always look at people above you and think, oh, I'd be mint if I was doing that. But mm-hmm. I am totally at peace with what I'm doing now. And I think what Greg and Kent are, is doing is unreal. Mm-hmm. Like, I, And I don't think Greg will mind me saying this, but back in the day, you would not, or I would not have picked out Greg to be the one that made the meteoric rise to regular top tens. But I am absolutely buzzing that he's doing it. It's so cool. I think and he's... Ken... <laughs> yeah, go on. So no, on you go. So you're you're in full flow there. I interrupted. Oh well, uh, Kent, uh, and I would say the same. I just didn't picture him just busting onto the scene and having the pace 
that he has coming from doing the cross country. Mm -hmm. And I would say the technique needs a little bit of uh, refinement coming from my coach's uh, coach's perspective, <laughs> but he's absolutely doing business. Is Kent on your books, is he? No, no, not yet. <laughs> he, 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 uh, I, I can't afford him pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call the, the good, the good thing about Greg and Kent, they're obviously they're probably riding quite a lot together because obviously where they live and they've now got that awesome pump track up there, um, which I still have to get my get myself up to and get a lap or two on it. But uh, you know, Greg, yeah. Greg's had had great support from the family, and you know, his dad's been helping him out for a few years before he got to that big deal a few years back, and he, he's been mm. sort of he's been in the He's been in the thick of it, and I think it's maybe just what, something one of these things that just clicked with me. Thought if I do this, I'll go faster, and therefore the confidence comes. So I think, I mean, Greg's mm. such a nice kid. I mean, I think he's just won a trophy there the other night for Scottish Rider of the Year. So good, mm -hmm. good luck to him. And the fact is that again, another product of the SDA series. Sorry to bum this up, Dave Munro will love me for this, but uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's great to see stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. Um, you work flipping hard for it. Yeah, definitely deserves deserves everything he's getting. I don't quite haven't heard who's who's quite riding for next year. Although the rumours are rife at the moment, so uh, fingers crossed it's, <laughs> it's 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 a full factory deal and he'll be uh, he'll be laughing all the way. But uh, yeah, I saw this, saw this weird rumours article on uh, this D de de decent world. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't, you don't you start with the American <laughs> accent? Descent, <laughs> <It was> descent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in case in case folks you're wondering what this website is, if you look below, there'll be a link somewhere to it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's one of these things. I mean, I think it's quite phenomenal. You get the, the likes of Kanta, who's jumped across from cross country. You've got Greg Williamson. You've mm. got Rory Cunningham. You've got Mark Scott killing it in enduro. You got Chris mm -hmm. Hutchins killing it in enduro. You you just start looking at all the names, and everything mm. everything revolves around one thing, and it, it is the, the, the Scottish scene, which is brilliant. And I think a lot of yeah, a lot of a lot of people are now on the outside looking in and so going, what's going on there, you know? And, and they have been probably for the last four or five years. So mm. it's, it's really, really good to see. And it's been nice to have been even a very, very small part of that. Mm. I'm sure you'll, I, you'll agree as well. You enjoy I it. Really, I remember a really interesting thing from uh, a couple of recent races was uh, when Pete Williams won the the national enduro uh, mm -hmm. in Erlethen. Mm -hmm. And he said he was really, he said he was really surprised and that, oh, yeah, it didn't feel like I did that well and won it. And then he came up to do the Scottish enduro and had good runs mm -hmm. and came eighth. And I think that was just really telling of like the depth of talent that was going on there. Yeah. And a lot of those guys in that top eight all came from downhill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, it goes without saying, if you want to be good at enduro, race downhill. So, mm. uh, you know, hopefully people... Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's true. I mean, you know, hopefully yeah, you, totally you've got a lot of these guys who are, who are jumping into, into enduro straight away and they're, they're what do you call it? But I think a couple of, couple of seasons downhill under their belt as well would help them in, in no uncertain terms. Mm. But, uh, but That's also are. more fun. So it's that yeah, as well. we do that. So, <laughs> right, now, now's the time just for some banter, right? Any rumours uh -oh. then? Come on, any Jen you want to spill on anybody? Uh, to be honest, I'm so out of the loop out here. <laughs> I, I, I know nothing. <laughs> uh, let's think what rumours. Uh, designed that way. I, uh, I might get a slightly longer stem for next season. That's that's not confirmed yet. Though. Okay. Is, it, um, is, it, is, this, is this now the 35 mil stem going outwards? Is, it, is, this, is this a new I'm, thing? I'm thinking, well, I'm on a 50 at the minute, and I'm thinking 55 could be the hot ticket. Right, okay. I'm, but that's, I, I don't know if that's too much. I've got an old 110 here, which I might lend you. It's uh, <laughs> It's got a negative rise. And, uh, yeah, it's sweet. It's quite, Put it on upside down then. It's quite good, you know. You, stick it, you can do that. But uh, no, that sounds kind of good. So, speaking of bikes, you're currently riding Santa Cruz, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am indeed. Um, is that kind of negotiating what to do for next year because mm -hmm. I'm all about trying to get that FOC deal mm -hmm. free of charge and it's it's tougher than you'd think a lot of people think it's really easy just to grab a free bike mm -hmm. but uh yeah negotiations are underway okay so, so so basically these guys have helped you out the last few years I know you've been been riding them but you're just kind of looking elsewhere or is it something which which you can't really say well, much no, about the minute? I I like. I'm a big fan of the Santa Cruz bikes. They've always been my my favourite bikes 
since I got that first V10 way back when. Mm, and yeah. I really enjoy working with uh, the guys at Jungle. Mm-hmm. And Dickon at Jungle has been real, real kind mm-hmm. and done as much as they can. Um, and I really want to ride for them again. But I feel like I, the amount I offer a brand, I don't know if I'm being egotistical or not, but I, I want to try and get what I feel I'm worth. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's, I don't think there's any shame in that. That's, that's just, I mean, look at Gwyn demanding 500,000 a year because that's what he thought he was worth. And allegedly, for, allegedly. Yeah, yeah allegedly. <laughs> So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying so, to just get what I feel like I'm worth, but I do want to still ride Santa Cruz. So yeah. that's that's what's going on at the minute. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's a hard thing sometimes. You know, you hear people that buy their rides and things like that because they want to ride a certain bike. So uh, mm, it's sometimes yeah. hard. And especially now, I mean, God, I, I, I probably said it, I wasn't going to mention this, but you get the likes of Brexit coming in next year as well. People, I think a, <laughs> a lot of importers of U.S. materials are going to find yeah, things yeah. a bit difficult, you know. So. Yeah, it's true. Well, I, I was like, I was just about to buy that new MacBook laptop, and then absolutely oh, filled yeah. my pants when I saw the price of it. Oh, so yeah. I bought last, I bought last year's one, <laughs> <laughs> and it was still probably two hundred quid more expensive, was it? But no, uh, I, I found a hot deal. I'm all about the hot deals. All right, that's not too bad. Then it's uh, it's what I got. I've I've been crying in my, in my own tea because I saw the price of them because I I was looking for something like a thirteen inch one, and then I saw I was like, what? The, the, the? So uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've got a rush out just now. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with uh, the desktop at the moment and uh, yeah. do it that way. Be but patient. It's all, it's all good so stuff. That, that's, that's. I think is that in a nutshell, basically you, or is there something, anything else you want to tell oh. us about the, the vlogs or the, the training, the coaching, the racing? I mean, are, um, are you, are you planning a full Scottish program next year? Or are you going to go further afield? You know what? If I was quick with my thoughts i would probably have something really good to say but uh, to be honest i'm pretty i'm slow at best i'm <laughs> fast in the bike and slow in the brain like. <laughs> but i mean it, I, if i was to round up my plans for next year i would say i'm going to race everything i can in scotland and try and win i'm going to teach a couple of new kids some new skills and bring them on and try and get them winning races i'm going to work with scottish cycling to help train the scottish development camp i'm going to make some rad videos and i'm going to share all the descent world posts because tommy will kick me in the ass if i don't <laughs> i like it i like your style so, so, so we're going to finish off right the three the three your three favorite riders to watch in scotland go Oh yeah, on the spot. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a, a real outlier here. Go. Cool. I'm gonna say uh, there's a dude who goes by the nickname of Ronnie Mac, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I can't I can't, I can't even remember his actual name because I just call him Ronnie Mac. But he's he's a dude from up uh, near Aberdeen, and he's the sketchiest dude you have ever seen on a bike. And it is amazing. Every time I watch him ride, I think he's going to die, and then he gets away with it. Okay. <laughs> so it, he's good for excitement. Yeah. Um, oh man, this is tough. This is tough. <laughs> I'd, I'd say Blythe fits in that category as well, but I think Ronnie's taking the title. Okay. Um, Mark Scott, because I just think his style is amazing. I love watching him ride. Mm-hmm. And if I was going to pick someone else, if for some reason, I think others would probably agree. And I probably miss someone else who deserves it, but I really like uh, Reese Wilson's riding style. I yeah. just there's something about it just looks amazing, and I don't I don't even know why. I mean, he's got he rides with a stiff back and he sits bolt upright, but I don't know why he makes it look amazing. I think it's so it, that, that'd it's, be my three. I think with Reese's style, I think it's it's the moto coming through him. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, you know, he just he just sits there and parse through stuff and. Was it say? I think he said the other day. It was two thousand twelve? Was his first year not racing moto, wasn't it? And yes, so, he, has, yeah. he hasn't regretted it since. He says because he's, he's been loving what he's been doing. So I think I think he's definitely next year. I think he's going to be hungry after a few injuries he's had this year. Yeah. So I think he's yeah. Going I think he's just had his ankle bolted back together or yeah. something. I think he did some ligaments, and he said something about get some kevlar weave run through the snap ligaments to mold it back together it sounded pretty complicated it's pretty technical that's a, I mean, it's a bit of aerospace engineering there or something going on but uh, uh no it's that's right. it okay so three top women then <laughs> three top women um trying to think in downhill downhill oh, or there's uh, oh downhill or yeah um da, da, da. There's a girl from up in Vernesway. 
and that's really bad. Freya, mm-hmm. uh, Freya Avis. Yeah, she's pretty damn good actually. Um, Kem's daughter, isn't it? Yeah, Kem's yeah, daughter. Yeah. Yeah, she's got a lot, lot of talent, a lot of potential, and she, her mum's taking her to all the races, and awesome. it's yeah, yeah, it's great to see. Um, who else? This is so bad. Because <laughs> there's someone I have in my mind who has really impressed me. Mm-hmm. I can't think who it is. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm really slow off the mark with the brain, man. <laughs> my, I need to upgrade the RAM because I just can't <laughs> access the memory. <laughs> So I'll just you just talk away while I think. No, I'm I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna let you suffer here in silence. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Fiona B really impressed me with her riding. I think she's mm-hmm. got like real solid riding style mm-hmm. and just needs to kind of push the envelope a little bit to get just find that extra bit of speed. Mm-hmm. Um let's think in Scotland. Oh God! And it's it's really unfair because there is someone that has really impressed me. Who was it? Oh, the girl. She's actually a cross country racer and started doing enduros. Mm-hmm. Connolly, someone Connolly. All right, so I don't know. I, Emma, maybe. I'm not sure. It's a uh, it's Sam Connolly's little sister. She I saw her on the most technical, vicious bit of trail at uh, the Danoon enduro uh, race, uh-huh. and. Everyone was sliding down it, either on their ass or their face, uh-huh. and she just rode through it all, like straight lined it. An issue. Just bossed it. Awesome, straight bossed it. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that took about ten minutes, but I got there. Yeah, it's no problem. That's that, that, that's what we want to hear. You know, you just uh, <laughs> you, you let your thoughts straight out on the podcast. That's the main thing. So, when it <laughs> when it comes to World Cup racing, who who's probably your favourite rider? Um, You've probably got a few. Yeah, for watching, Sam Blenkinsop's one of my favourite dudes. Just mm-hmm. his spazzy, flipping all over the place style, mm-hmm. scrubbing, pedalling in the air, I just find amazing. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Menard, because his riding style is what I've always tried to emulate, just the smooth, trying to be stylish and failing yeah. on my part. Um, I love that, so I really look up to his riding in regards to that. And used to be, I'd say, I'd say old school Sam Hill, right. like Sam in his prime. I, it is like the pinnacle. I flipping love it. Yeah. Did you think with him uh, switching across to enduro, you're going to see some of that again? I hope so. The yeah. passion's back. It it seems to be seems to go a bit of a fire again. And mm. I think obviously new new family member and the decision to go full time EWS with a few mm. World Cups, but I think he's. He's got a bit between the teeth again. He, I think he's he's hungry, and uh, mm. I think we could see some sparks from him next year. And I think I reckon he's training like mad. He yeah, will, I, he, I hope to, we see like a big battle between Richie and him. Well, if you can imagine Graves, Richie, you know, all all the top contenders, it'll be, it'll be good to see. Although there was people that were saying that Richie may be coming back to downhill, but I don't know if that rumor is quite true yet. But yeah, uh, I think I heard that as well. Yeah, so we'll see what happens in the new year, no doubt. But. Mm. Uh, there we go. We're going to, we're almost coming to an end of this. Is there anybody you want to maybe give a shout out to, or you know, give a few good mentions to people? Any websites, um, Instagram accounts, Facebook pages, <laughs> you know, uh, YouTube Phil, YouTube Phil, channels. You know, Phil Atwell's Instagram is pretty sensational. Okay. I like. No, uh, I meant your. His I, meant, jibs. I meant your own. <laughs> <laughs> You, oh, right. I thought you were looking for recommendations. No, 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 no. It's just, just plug your own and plug anybody you'd like to plug, and then uh, we can take it from oh, there. Oh, yeah. So you're on Instagram, you uh, are at. Is it at Ben, ben Catherine? Just at Ben Catherine. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the lucky few who has a very unique name. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I, I don't think Catherine's that unique, but see if you, if you Google it or if you look on Facebook, I'm the only one. So I've awesome. got Ben Catherine at Gmail and I've got Ben Catherine Instagram. I got them all. It's amazing. Fantastic. So there you go, folks. Just <laughs> just Google Ben Cathro and you should get him. Okay, and that's at C A T H R O. And then with no 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 W. A lot of people have the W. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so that so that's it. So you're, you're, um, you're on Instagram. You Facebook it. You YouTube it. Um, mm, any other things you? And there's yeah, also Pinterest. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm I'm a bit old school. Like. 
I think Facebook and Instagram's plenty. Anything beyond that's just a bit too taxing. Yeah. Old, old school's MySpace, mate. <laughs> MySpace. I still got a Bebo account of it. Oh, fair enough. Can you remember? <laughs> uh, here's another quick. Can you remember your forum handle from the Descent World forum? Uh, yeah, on enough. That's it. Hey, I think. Yeah, all your posts are still in the archive, I believe. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure you assigned that name to I, me. I could. Have I, I remember. I, yeah, because I remember not knowing, and then uh, I think you assigned that. I, that was that was good days. Oh yeah, a long time that, ago. That 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 was social media back in 2003. Yeah, it was. It was certainly, but uh, unfortunately, things change, and uh, we all move on. But uh, that's true. Well, there you go. Right, Ben, I'm going to start bringing this to a close because I don't know about mm. you, I'm dying for a cup of tea. And uh, Well, I, I've got to be honest, you know, when we started this interview and I said I wasn't busy, yeah. I'd actually just been I'd actually just been handed my dinner, but I thought it'd be nice. <laughs> oh, so have you, have you been eating the whole time or is it sitting in front of you? Cool? No, it's just sitting there. Oh, no. Just, just looking at me in the face. I got four fish, four fish fingers. Some potato wedges and some mushy peas. Do you want to do? Have you got a microwave? It's getting blasted in the microwave. All right, let's see. Yeah, throw it in the microwave and uh, apologise to the other half, Tina, for me, please. Uh, <laughs> I will do. But uh, bad, bad timing on my part. But there you go. So, Ben, thanks very much for spending some time with us mm. tonight. And uh, hopefully, hopefully people enjoy listening to the, the bit of crack and a bit of history behind it, where you've come from and uh, all your six school stuff. And uh, good luck for the future. Hey, if you made it this far, you've done well. All right. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much. Massive thank you to Ben Cather for joining me tonight. My name's John Beckett. Thanks for clicking on descent-world.co.uk, listening to this podcast, looking at our Instagram at Descent World, and following us on Facebook. Don't forget you can review us on iTunes. You can leave comments on the website. Let us know what you think of the podcast and we'll keep improving it as we go on. And once again, thank you for listening. Good night all.